The second talk, the talk on science culture, will be given today by Chileka Mpande, who is a PhD student about to complete her PhD, also working in Zatvi. Later today, Chileka will be talking about on a different topic, which is the story of Immunopedia. She was born and raised in Zambia and then came to South Africa for her undergraduate as well as her, as her postgraduate um, studies, where she has been at UCT. She's currently doing her PhD on TB vaccinology and immunology with Tom Scriber, as well as Elisa Nims. She has had her postgraduate study supported uh, through some prestigious scholarships, uh, including the South African Women in Science and Engineering Angus Scholarship and an Innovation Scholarship from the South African National Research Foundation and the Department of Science and Innovation. As a doctoral student, Cheka became very interested in science communication and she, and she joined as a junior communications officer, Immunopedia, which you'll hear about today as a non-profit educational website, which aims to promote cutting edge knowledge and research in basic and clinical immunology. And she'll be presenting on Immunopedia with a topic being advancing global immunology education. Um, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I'd like to thank the HHMI Genedia Institute for organizing these webinar series, the IDM team for selecting Immunopedia for today's culture talk, and Valerie Mizrahi for that wonderful introduction. I'm going to give you an overview of what Immunopedia is and the work we do to advance in global immunology education. Just one second, sorry. Immunopedia is an open access nonprofit immunology website targeted at researchers, healthcare professionals, and students. Our mission is to promote knowledge and research in the field of immunology worldwide. Even though we are open access, we do have some content that's behind a free login, and you have access to it as soon as you register with our website. We were founded in 2004 after Clive Gray received a leadership award from the Elizabeth Glazer Foundation to provide a resource for health professionals to learn about the immunological basis of pediatric HIV. We then officially launched as a website in 2005 at the South African AIDS Conference. We use a Trojan host approach to highlight an immunology concept using clinical case studies. These case studies give a step-by-step -step overview of the clinical processes associated with diagnosing and treating patient pathology we then give an in-depth overview of the immunological pathways associated with this pathology. And we do this using infographics and images unique to Immunopedia. Um, in this specific infographic, we describe how parvovirus B19 infection caused severe anemia in an HIV positive child. In 2010, we received the Science Prize for Online Resources in Education. And this was specifically for our clinical case studies, which use a problem-based approach to teach um, a specific immunology concept. Over the years, we have diversified our clinical case study portfolio, and we have clinical cases that um, vary across different age groups and also which cover different themes in immunology, including autoimmunity, hypersensitivity, and primary and secondary immunodeficiencies. In 2014, we partnered with the International Union of Immunological Societies to be the official immunology education platform. So, so not everyone who attends conferences, courses, or even conducts um, immunology research has formal training in the fundamental aspects of immunology and are often required to learn the fundamentals of immunology by themselves. To alleviate this problem, we provide um, an online curated immunology resource prior to face-to-face -face meetings, and this was specifically for the IUIS. And we co-facilitated um, our first IUIS course, which was um, conducted in Colombia in 2015. We offer self-paced online courses that firstly cover the core aspects of innate and adaptive immunity. And this ensures that people have the fundamental knowledge in immunology, um, required to understand advanced immunology content. Then we provide um, advanced immunology content specific to the IUIS course. And in this um, image, I'm just um, showing you one of the um, web pages we have that discuss mucosa um, immunology. And um, we require all participants to complete the core and advanced immunology modules prior to the face-to-face -face meetings. 
And by doing so, we ensure that students have sufficient knowledge required to fully participate and engage with the novel research that's shared at the course. Over the past five years, we have helped co-facilitate 17 IIS courses that were organized in various parts of the world, um, primarily in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. And we have helped um, train over a thousand participants. The themes of these advanced immunology courses range and include allergy research, infectious diseases, and cancer immunotherapy. Um, in addition to helping co-facilitate these courses for IUIS, all registered users do have access to these courses and can learn about different aspects of advanced immunology um, at their own time. In addition to partnering with IUIS, we also partner with other institutions. For example, we're funded with the Vaccines for Africa Institution based at UCT to provide um, pre-course material for the annual vaccinology course. And this is because the attendees for the annual African vaccin vaccinology course come from different um, fields. Some are clinical workers, some are more public health professionals, and we want them to engage fully in the content that should be shared. And we ensure this by um, them having um, core vaccinology knowledge. We also provide um, complementary material for the UCT honors course and the advanced immunology course um, that happen at UCT. In addition to providing content before face-to-face -face meetings, we also collate presentations and necessary resources shared at different courses. And we offer post-course material for some of the courses we help co-facilitate. Co and an example of this is for the AFRIBOP course. In 2017, we developed the Ambassador Program, which is a collective of young immunologists. The aim of this um, program is to foster a global network of upcoming young and aspiring immunologists who will promote immunology and also promote um, immunopedia as a teaching resource at their host institutions. Um, our immunopedia ambassadors come from different parts of the world. I think about a third of them are from Africa, but we do have ambassadors from Asia, Europe, North and South America and Oceania. Ambassadors are primarily recruited um, via the courses that we help co-facilitate co However, there are opportunities to, for ambassadors to volunteer either via our website or um, via our newsletters. Um, in addition to the ambassadors um, showcasing Immunopedia as a teaching resource, the ambassadors also write summaries of recently published articles. And the aim of these summaries is to keep our readers up to date with the ever-changing world of immunology. The ambassadors also write summaries of conference proceedings and course proceedings um, that they attend. And the aim is to share the knowledge they gained with um, the wider global network. The activities of these ambassadors has been very important during the COVID-19 pandemic. As you know, there was um, a vast increase in the amount of COVID-19 literature that was available. And for many, this could be daunting to figure out what exactly was happening. So we wanted to keep our readers up to date by providing daily updates on COVID-19 research. And this research was not only exclusive to immunology, um, COVID-19 immunology, but also wrote summaries about COVID-19 virology and epidemiological research. In addition to writing these summaries, the ambassadors also conduct interviews of prominent immunologists. So this is just an example of an interview conducted of Stanley Plotkin. Um, I conducted this interview and I was quite happy to interview such a prominent leader in vaccinology and ask him questions and have that opportunity. The aim of these interviews is to showcase the research the immunologists conduct and also describe their journeys and um, give advice to young immunologists. Um, I would also like to highlight um, an interview we conducted of Timothy Ray Brown. For people who are not familiar with him, Timothy Ray Brown is an HIV um, advocate. He was the first person to be cured of HIV. And we recently got the news that he passed away due to le leukemia. If you're interested in learning about his story, you can listen to an interview we have um, that we conducted with Timothy Ray Brown in 2018. In addition to the ambassadors contributing to Immunopedia's content, we also conduct interviews of these ambassadors. 
And the aim of these ambassador, um, these interviews is to showcase the research they do and also describe why the ambassadors enjoy immunology research and got into immunology research in the first place. We recently partnered with the Keystone Symposium to give the ambassadors the opportunity to share their research on the virtual Keystone Symposium um, website. And we think this is a great opportunity um, for the ambassador's career as it enables them to showcase their research on a global platform without actually attending the Keystone conferences. Um, in 2020, um, due to travel restrictions, a lot of conferences were either canceled or postponed. And we decided to evolve with the times and conduct our first um, virtual course. So this course was for Immune Algeria, which was scheduled to happen in June 2020 and was focused um, on advanced allergy research. So prior to actually laying the groundwork and developing this virtual course, we wanted to ensure that we had buy-in from both the participants and the faculty members. Of the 48 participants that were selected for the face-to-face -face course, 36 students opted in for the virtual course. 65% of these students were females and all students came from Africa. So in addition to our self-paced online content that we provide, we also conducted four weekly lectures um, in May. And the aim of these lectures were firstly to make sure that the students and the faculty members were familiar with the Zoom platform, to give a platform for the students to ask um, um, core immunology questions that they didn't understand and also for them to um, be at ease at asking questions to each other and also to the faculty members. We then had um, advanced allergy lectures in June. So instead of having an eight hour long five day immunology lecture series, we decided to conduct the lecture series over two weeks and had two two hour sessions, one in the morning and one in the afternoon. Um, this schedule was designed um, based on feedback from both the faculty members and the students. And we were able to have 19 faculty pre presentations during the two week period in June and 35 of the 36 students presented their work. And I think this is the first time that almost all um, course participants were able to present their work in front of the full faculty and student cohort and also receive feedback from faculty members and students. In addition to providing the courses, we also receive feedback from the participants and from the faculty members. And we use this feedback to improve the way we facilitate our courses. Overall, majority of um, participants found the pre-course information and um, pre-course content very informative. They found that the level of the faculty presentations were very appropriate and they were very happy with this online platform. Some personal feedback was they highlighted that the online meetings are much cheaper than face to face meetings as um, organizing travel costs. Um, I mean, travel funding is, is often a hindrance for students to apply for international meetings. For many, this was their first international course and they're quite happy that even in the midst of a pandemic, they're still able to attend a course and learn about allergy research. A lot of them um, enjoyed the structure of the self-paced online course and they said that it, it enabled them to be well prepared for the advanced allergy lectures that were um, conducted in June. And they also enjoyed the online platform because they were able to interact with more faculty members than they thought they would have had um, during face-to-face -face meetings. So overall, the Immuno Algeria virtual course was very successful and the Immunopedia team was very happy because we did have some glitches um, organizing this, but it was quite nice that both the faculty and the student um, team enjoyed the online virtual course. We also partnered with the South African Immunology Society to conduct a uh, six well, six webinar series starting from August and um, our last webinar will be in two weeks. So the aim of these webinars would, was to showcase COVID-19 research relevant to the South African context. And um, we have four webinars that are available on YouTube. And these webinars um, cover different aspects of antibody research that um, is relevant to South Africa. 
and also highlight the different COVID-19 vaccine trials that are happening in South Africa. Um, Immunopedia has almost 3,500 registered users. We have over 5,500 newsletter subscribers and almost 1,000 followers on Facebook and Twitter. And our YouTube content has received almost 2,500 views. Um, this graph just gives um, an overview on the number of unique visitors. And when I mean unique, it's the number of people who have visited the website for the first time in 30 days. And you can see um, there's a steady increase in the number of unique visitors um, over the past five years. And this increase, the number of unique visitors is also associated with um, an increase in the global usage of Immunopedia. In August of 2017, um, a lot of our visitors came from South Africa and different parts of the global regions where we conducted courses. And in 2020, we have um, a much bigger footprint, not only in Africa, but in Asia, Europe, North and South America, and in Oceania. I would like to acknowledge Clive Gray, our, fa our founder, the Scientific Steering Committee and the Chair of the Scientific Steering Committee, Michelle Latat, Bon Holtek, who's the Senior Communications Officer, Tendeka Moyo, um, who was the Junior Communications Officer. Before me, the Immunopedia Ambassadors, Sponsors and Partners, as they help us achieve our mission of advancing global education. I would like to urge you to um, visit our YouTube page to look at um, some of the video interviews we have as well as follow us on Facebook and um, Twitter to keep up to date with the content we have um, on Immunopedia. Um, thank you for listening and for taking time to watch this webinar. Thank you, Shleka. That was a great talk. It was a really fantastic, enlightening introduction to Immunopedia. Um, I'm particularly um, interested in your ambassador program. I think it's a very creative mm -hmm. way of engaging and informing other people about the value of Immunopedia. So let mm -hmm. me ask you, um, what qualities do you seek in your ambassadors? So firstly, the first quality is that they need to be enthusiastic about promoting um, immunology research. And um, we also look for people who um, are keen on not only showcasing their own research, but showcasing research at their institutions or anything or any other research that is conducted um, in their field. The ambassadors are required to regularly um, contribute to Immunopedia. Mm -hmm. So the ambassadors have to write um, short summaries, they have to conduct interviews, and they also have to showcase Immunopedia quite a number of times over a six month period. So during, through those activities, we are able to ensure that they contribute to Immunopedia, that they are still enthusiastic about being part of the ambassador program, and also contribute to advancing the global education, um, global immunology education. And how long is their, um, does their role go on as ambassadors? It goes on for as long as they want. Sometimes oh, um, ambassadors, do feel that they have achieved as much as they could as an Immunopedia ambassador and do request not to be part of the ambassador program, but there is no tenure to being an ambassador. There are some ambassadors that I think have been there um, since the start of the program in 2017. As long as they continue to um, contribute to Immunopedia, they remain um, as ambassadors. So can you tell us a little bit about, um, and I think you mentioned uh, briefly that they, they do give talks, but what are some ways that you encourage them to promote Immunopedia in their you know, local areas? So um, we don't give a blueprint on how to promote. And I think the ambassadors need to come up with innovative ways to do that. Um, we do encourage them if they're attending um, courses, for example, to request if they can um, give a short presentation of what Immunopedia is. And mm -hmm. generally, a lot of ambassadors do. Some ambassadors go to schools and promote immunology using Immunopedia at the schools. And they usually take photos, which we showcase on the website or on our Twitter page. Mm -hmm. So there are various ways in which they can contribute. And it's just as long as they show us how they've contributed. And we have proof of that, that we accept. 
So a, a question from um, Ron Vale is, um, he says, it looks like you've developed um, a, a good user group in India and Spain. Um, how is it that Immunopedia actually reached those international sites? Is it only through the ambassador program or are there other um, mechanisms of, of reaching those um, distant sites? So I can tell you for India is that we helped co-facilitate a course last year in Immuno Jaipur. And this course, um, the students were required to complete a self-paced online course using Immunopedia. And I think this is a way in which our reach increased in Immunopedia. In Spain, I really don't know because we haven't conducted immunology lectures in Spain. This could be maybe via our Twitter page, via our ambassadors. I think we have two ambassadors that are from Spain. Um, maybe it could be via the articles that we share that they might have seen our Immunopedia um, profile on Twitter and they follow us. So right. some places I really can't explain how we have increased our reach. So let me ask you, um, you know, how, how is the content on Immunopedia um, curated? Is there some sort of like um, administrative or operational infrastructure um, that, that constantly curates this um, content? Um, or is everyone basically primarily a, a bench researcher and you, you, you work on Immunopedia you know, as a, as a side interest? Okay, so Immunopedia is primarily curated via Bon Hotak. Well, the layout of Immunopedia is primarily curated via Bon Hotak. Um, the content is updated um, at, while we create pre-course um, pre materials, and this is done in conjunction with the Immunopedia ambassadors and with me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's the primary, primary way we curate our content. That's for the course content. For the summaries, the Immunopedia ambassadors and I write regular summaries, and this could be um, on any immunology topic. Um, as you know, I'm part of SATV, so I sometimes write about tuberculosis research studies. Mm -hmm. um, I primarily write about HIV and virology and um, vaccinology studies. And other ambassadors who conduct research in different aspects of immunology write about their topics. And that's how we have a diverse range of summaries. Great. So one last question. Um, you know, you mentioned that you ran um, a virtual course and you collected some, some feedback afterwards. And I'm just wondering, did you learn anything, you know, from that feedback that might actually shape future courses, whether they're held virtually or um, in person? Did you learn anything that's going to sort of change the way you, you execute these in the future? Um, I think one of the good things we learned is that it's great to have the self-paced online courses that the students can have access to, but having, um, for example, a web in, a Zoom session where the students can ask questions for core immunology was quite great. And maybe in the future, we can incorporate that um, in the pre-course content um, schedule that we have for face-to-face -face meetings. And another thing we learned is that it, it also gives the opportunity for more students to present their work. Because um, if you go to face-to-face -face meetings, um, some students um, present poster sessions, some students are not required to present um, any of their research at all. But having an online platform, we can ensure that majority of students are required to present their work. And this potentially could be something we take um, on on future. We are still processing, or well, not processing, analyzing the feedback required, and then we'll decide how we are going to use this going forward. Great. All right. I think we've pretty much run out of time today, but I just want to take one final minute to thank you, Chaleka, for that great talk and also thank Tom again for his um, fabulous talk. We really appreciate you guys um, joining us on the series. Thank you to the audience for tuning in this week. Um, if you have further questions for Tom or Chaleka, please um, uh, head over to our Slack workspace. I've put the link in the chat box. Um, and of course, join us again um, next Wednesday, October 7th, um, where we will hear um, two talks from the Simon Center at the National Center for Biological Sciences, NCBS, in Bangalore. And the speakers are Madan Rao and Mukun Tatai. So I hope to see you guys all again next Wednesday. Have a great day. <laughs>